I just can't get my head right mentality, I really can't. And this is the sort of stuff that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. It's really pissing me off. That view again, isn't it? The Great Ridge. Looking absolutely beautiful in this lovely autumn, mid afternoon sunshine. It's about two o'clock. We're just making his way along Pennine Way out of Edale. We're heading up to Bottom of Jacob's Ladder. Where I'm going to filter some water there. We're off out for an overnight of the course. Where I'm going as yet, not 100% sure. I'm not going to any uh, usual spots, let's put it that way. I'm going to have a little look about to see if I can find a spot somewhere where I've not camped. See if I can find one that I've never sort of come across before. So we're going to do a little bit of exploring and I'll come on to the reason behind that a little bit later on. Because I've got a little bit of a, I'm not going to say rant, but I've got something I want to get off my chest regarding this place. You all know it's a place I love kinder, but is it getting too popular? But like I say, we'll, uh, we'll get onto that a little bit later on. So we'll get through the gate here, get along to uh, the bottom of Jacob's ladder, like I say, get some uh, water filtered just there. I'm going to have two minutes there. I've got a scotch egg to have, and we'll get on off up Jacob's ladder, start having a look about. So as you can see, like I was saying, it's an absolutely beautiful afternoon. Lovely, I want to say warm, autumn sun. <laughs> Low skies, a little bit of cloud knocking about. It's absolutely beautiful. A slight breeze, exactly as it's been forecast. It's around 14, 15 degrees, which for this time of year, it's, it's unseasonably warm, isn't it? Just keeps changing on a weekly basis, these... Uh, these conditions, and as many of you will have seen my last video, up in lakes, on rays, <laughs> God blimey, that, them, I, I said in video, them winds on there that morning, from middle of the morning, they, were, they weren't forecast, they were only sort of be around 25, 30 mile an hour tops, but that, that was just absolutely horrendous, that, absolutely crazy, but I've, I've said many a times, if, them sort of conditions, I don't, uh, I don't purposely head out in that. Uh, you, you just, you can't sleep, and which you'll have seen it video again. I barely got any sleep from sort of half two, three o'clock that morning. And it's, you know, it's one thing heading out into him, but if you you go out expecting it to be a certain forecast, and you get caught out like that, then you know that's it. You, as long as you've got that right kit and. You know, you sort of, if you do get that, you can be sort of prepared for it, then all the better. But, like I say, that, that, that and that were literally three days ago in Lakes, in Peak District today, and it's like this, a lovely gentle, it's even a warm breeze. We've got a little bit of a breeze, and if you can hear it blowing through trees, and it's it's got a warm feel to it. It's not cold at all. It's absolutely crazy. Right, well, I'm just at the bottom of Jacob's Ladder, near the uh, Pacos Bridges. I've just built like two litres of water. And I'm just going to have ten minutes here, just to soak a bit of this sun up. And I've got a lovely scotch egg to wear. A bit of drink. Like I said, soak a bit of this in for ten or fifteen minutes. And then we'll get on up up there at back of us. Usually when I come here, I filter my water, 
help me back on and get straight off up there. You know, sort of, I've been guilty of not sort of, I have done it past, don't get me wrong, on day walks and stuff, and I've sat here for half an hour or so, but in recent times I've not done enough of that. It's an absolutely beautiful spot here at the uh, bottom of Jacob's Valley Way bridges. And of course, that's where the old pack horse rope was off up here, and you'll see it with the sun, but turn left of that bridge, the old, old pack horse rope was off up. Up to the top of Jacob's Ladder Way at Kearney's. And there's the old uh, Eid Owl, Eid, Eid Owl. Eid Owl House just up top of it over here. All the remains on it. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful spot, this. So, yeah, when I get my Scotch egg, get a drink, sit, watch, look, and listen for 10 minutes. Right then, well as gorgeous as it is today, just here, I could sit here for an hour. I need to get on, pop up that. Never gets any easier this, get good. I can confirm that that gets no easier. Or am I just getting older? Oh dear. That's a shame to see. Whether it's collapsed on its sen or somebody's pulled it down. A few years back, it was in a worse state than that and somebody come up rebuilt all that. Somebody's done that, they want to have a word with the sens. Could have fell down naturally on its sen, but stands there for quite a number of years that. Never know a bother, and then you come up another time and everything it's collapsed. Here dear. Well, as I've come up that other drag from top of Jacob's ladder just there where it can is. The old trade route. Every time I come up there, I always try and walk up that main path, the old cobbled actual route. And I always wondered to miss him. I'm walking in footsteps of people from hundreds of years ago. What sort of people walked up and down there 300 years ago? What sort of people were they? What did they look like? What were they wearing? You know, as many in you full well know it was the trade route from Edale over into sort of Glossop and Chapel and Lathrif and all that trading uh, I think it were coal and wool and linens and other stuff like that you know what did they look like them people that were coming up down there men and women you can imagine them sort of very weathered looked very worn you can just imagine a farmer's hands can't you men and women full of blisters and calluses from working on farms and lame paths and real people, real people. That's Edale Rocks just there. Well, I've uh, got a little bit of time. Sunset is half past six. It's ten to four. So I'm gonna have a little walk out. It's quite a while since I've been out onto Kindle of End, so I'm going to have a little walk out there and then try and find a spot somewhere like I was saying earlier on, try and find somewhere somewhere new to me see if I can't find a unearth a nice little spot somewhere that's not being used so yeah we're going to have a, we'll have a little wonder of it to Kindle of End there's a Tumalai on here as well so we'll have a look at that when we get over there so here we are at Kindalow End and this lump over my right shoulder it's not actually marked on map as a tumulus this it's just marked down as a cairn but I think that is an ancient burial mound just as 
You'll not see it from here, but looking over towards Mamtor, obviously a lot of you know that Mamtor, what a, a Bronze Age fort on, on there. And then if you come along Great Ridge or along uh, Russia Pedge, just along Russia Pedge along here, at Lord's Sea there's an actual tumulus there. Now tumuli are ancient uh, burial mounds and it's identical to that. So even though it's not marked on map as a tumulus this or tumuli, I think tumulus is like one and tumuli is when there's several of them, so plural or whatever it is. But that, I reckon, is a tumulus, ancient burial mound. So several thousands of years ago, I mean, you can imagine on here, can't you? Kinder low end, look at, I mean, look at vantage point from up here. It's fantastic, you can uh, sort of imagine some sort of fort being on here. Or where people might have lived back in Bronze Age and uh, sort of Neolithic Age and things like that. Obviously, throughout Peak District, there's a lot of a lot of history, especially along edges, along the, uh, I mean, Gardam's Edge, what a place that is for that sort of stuff. Absolutely full of history. Neolithic and Bronze Age history on me, it's absolutely amazing. It's, my, it's probably my favourite place, other than Kinderys Gardam's Edge. It's absolutely mesmerising, that place. The history that's got there. But yeah, you can just sort of imagine some sort of settlement on here, can't you? And, Having a burial mound, I, I reckon, obviously when that was archaeologists back in, whenever they dug them up and everything and they started marking them down on maps, they were un, un, dis, uh, dis, un, you know, unearthing all these burial mounds and tombs and everything and obviously they'll have taken all human remains away and stuff like that. You don't want to believe in stuff like that for modern day people, the general public, public to be coming and digging mounds up like that looking for body body remains and stuff, human remains. So yeah, it's uh, like I say, it's been quite a while since I've come and had a little gander over here. Quite a few years in fact. Because as you go to follow up Pennine way around and you're going across Kinderlow and over to Kinderlow, over to Kinder Downfall and that, or Sandy Hayes, or wherever. So I thought, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come and have a little gander over here. Seeing as I've not been in a while. Right, well, I'm sort of, I've come across from Kindalow End, which is just back over there. I've come a sort of along a traverse path. First time I've walked on that, actually. You usually follow the um, stone slab path back up and across path. Kindalow Trig's about maybe 200 yards that way. I'm just looking about, doing a little bit of exploring. I've come across this nice little spot here. And just right back at rocks, I spy this. Obviously a dump tent. Camping gas. It looks as like though it's been here a bit, that. Just... That, and I'm sorry for language, that fucking pisses me off, that. Somebody's come and camped here, I'd have a long it, whatever. Thought, you know what, I'm just gonna leave tent there, chuck it under some rocks and leave my gas can there and, and don't give a fucking shit. Fucking hell fire. <sighs> Trouble is, I can't. I know where that is, if I find somewhere along here to camp and I, I sort of, maybe I could have took that down with me in the morning, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mark this area on my map on my phone as a POI. And either get back up my sen at some point or if anybody else is going to be in area I'll put it on one of the Facebook groups and see if somebody can take that. I've just noticed as well here as I just can't get made right mentality, I really can't. And this is the sort of stuff that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on. It's really pissing me off. Right, I'm not gonna let that dampen my vibe. I'm gonna go and try and find a little spot somewhere. It's half past four now. I don't know if I said earlier on. Sunset's half past six. Looking at forecast, we should be on for a nice sunset. It's forecasted to be. 
So looking out to the west here of the Manchester Stockport area, we should get a nice hazy sunset over there. So we're going to try and find a nice little spot somewhere away from this shit. Right, uh, well I've come across another spot just here. As I say, I came round here to these rocks just over here and I walked this way. I saw this one first. I thought I'll just have another little look around, see if there were hotels, but this looked my favourite. Like I say, I'm not I'm not stopping at a spot there where there's a dump tent like that and I can't I can't get my head around that. I can't get my head around it. So yeah, I'm gonna pitch here for neat. It does look as though it gets used obviously. It's quite a worn area. I'll have a little look around. I can't see any rubbish, can't see out visible or out like that. Just walked around them rocks there just behind me. I can't see out there so Although it's uh, although it does look as though it's a well-used spot, it does look as though folk that use it keep it clean. So yeah, we'll get tent pitched up. Right, uh, it's quarter to six. Sunset is 18:33, so we're about three quarts an hour for that sunset. It looks as though it's going to be an easy one, just over there, but. Looking really easy over Manchester Stockport area. So yeah, we're all pitched up anyway, so I've had my sleeping bag just on top here for about 10 or 15 minutes. Just staring out a little bit. Got changed out of my clothes that I walked up in there, on top there, just staring off. I went to my base layer, merino base layer and my 90 century. So I've just uh, I've had a drink and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get sat down and I don't want what I want to set to you a lot to stew any longer so I'm going to get it off my chest as you've just seen up there what I've come across there just oh, I don't know I don't know hey, I'm, I'm going to sit down and we'll get into it So right then, topic of conversation, has Kinder Scout become too popular for camping? Now, it's going to be two points obviously, like I've just said, uh, has it become too popular and then the rubbish side in it, well the rubbish that you find and everything else up here is that's a result of, is it being too popular? Now, before I start going any further, I'm holding my hands up. A big part of it being too popular, is it my fault? I think it probably is. There's a lot of other YouTubers, well-known YouTubers out there. Is it their fault as well? Probably is. Because we all come up here onto Kinder Scout whether it be on Southern Edge, around Wolpax, whatever, Fairbrook Nears, around Sealstones, wherever. We film it, we put it on YouTube. And anybody with any, or anybody well about them, navigational wise, or can sort of recognise layout land when you're doing these videos, it doesn't take much for people to work out, following routes in as you're describing routes like I like to do. It doesn't take much to work out where you are. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sort of going to sit here and preach that we shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that and when, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a big part of probably to, to blame for it. So yeah, has, has, it, has Kinder Scout become too popular to camp? I think it probably has. Especially at weekends, I don't tend to come camping up Kinder at, at weekends because it is far too busy. Even Edel Car Park just gets absolutely rammed. <laughs> You come sometime on a Saturday, you can't even get parked up. But even throughout week, you know, it's, what day is it today? It's Monday today. I've seen three other campers on the way up here, and I saw one in car park just setting off as about, as, as I were about set off. But it's a Monday. And I've seen other people, you know, no matter what time, what day it is throughout week, you see either people setting off in car park, or somebody's just arriving back, or you see somebody camping. You know, on your way up, and I've seen people camped, pitched up, 
three hours before sunset. So one of the reasons why I've sort of been having a, a look about in recent times that I come up here for different spots or trying to find some different spots, spots that people aren't using. It's because of a lot of the regular spots that I've used, been using years, these are spots that are really cracking spots, with great views, it's a great, great camp spot, lots of flat areas, but they're getting overused. And one of my favourite spots, I'm not going to name it, it's, it's one that I've used quite a lot and years ago when I first discovered it. There were only a sort of select few that used to use it that knew about it. But again, likes of myself, we put it out there on YouTube, don't we? And people find out where they are. So, said spot, last time I went to it, I found a disposed barbecue. Burnt wood under rocks. A big, big white bag full of rubbish, full of tins, Heineken. Who drinks Heineken? <laughs> yeah, just, and I just thought to myself, you know, and there, were, there were other bits knocking about and, and it's not just, you know, I'm, I'm not just having a dig at campers here as well. It, you know, it's people that come on day hikes. I've filmed several bits coming up here. I've seen orange peel, banana skins, plastic tubs from these little, you know, these little snap deals you get from shop and things like that. Sports bottles, you know, Lucasade, Powerade bottles and things like this. So, you know, the, these spots that have been, that I've used and several other people have known about for years and years are getting overused now. And and don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not, for, for want of a better word, I don't want to sound like I'm being elitist, snobby, what other way can you put on it? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, nobody else can use these spots, this is my spot. It's here for everybody to use, but use it sensibly. We can't keep coming to places like this and destroying habitats. Some of these places what I've been using years, when you first discover them, there were literally one space for a tent. I've seen several places where I've camped regular over years, going back years. There's now been three and four tents on them. And I just think that's destroying, you know, little micro habitats, insects and things like this. And they end up being sort of little blots on land and thing, you know, we just, we need to get away from this thing of destroying places and leaving rubbish and this and the other and it just, it really gets me down because I, I love getting into outdoors. I've, I've been doing it since I was a kid. I went to scouts and I used to love getting out and going up into the woods with my mates as a young un in autumn, lighting a fire, picking chestnuts. That, you know, through my teens and stuff like that, started going out and through all my life I've just loved getting out. I've done been doing this for a long, long time. People sort of forget that, you know, they see it on YouTube. I've been on YouTube eight years. The only thing you've been camping eight years. I've been doing it a long time. Been coming up Kinder Scout since I was 13, 14 year old. I've told the story many a times. One of my school teachers, the first time he fetched us up Kinder Scout, as a, I was, like I said, maybe 15, I walked to Edale Rocks and that view back down, Vale of Edale. I still can't put a word on it now. It is the best view. And as many on you that follow me, I've been all over the place. That is the best view. And it, you know, I think it's probably because it was the view that I fell in love with as a kid. And it's still an amazing view now. So why do we come up and destroy these places? You know, we, I can't get my head around this mentality, is it? I don't know. And it's not just kids, you know, we're not talking about kids here that are coming up, it's it's adults that are coming up, you know, the rubbish situation, leaving leaving shit like that. I can't, I can't think, you know, I can't want for a better word, it, it is pre basically leaving your shit. If you were fetching disposable barbecues up and you're, you're cooking steaks and such, and this and the other, and you're burning wood, 
and you know and leaving fire scars on grass and fire scars don't they don't just grow back in a matter of weeks months they're there for years the last years and again you're destroying micro habitats and, and fetching cans of beer up. I mean don't you know don't get me wrong you've all seen me I, I have a couple of drinks but they'll get crushed down and they get put in a rubbish bag everything you know but I'm like I, you know I'm a big, big advocate of the leaving the trace you know and I take everything that I fetch up with me goes back so you know what what is it with this mentality of coming up and just leaving bags of rubbish and as you've seen back there what what rate do people think they've got to come to a camp and just think I'm just going to leave I'm just going to shove roll it up screw it up tent shove it behind a rock chuck a few rocks on it chuck me used glass beer bottles and a, and a you know and a, a gas canister I don't know what you know what what do we do how do we approach it what what do we have to do I don't know Is it like I say? Is it is it is it down to us YouTubers? Are we to blame? Can I sit here and say I'm not to blame? No, I can't. Like I said to start with, we video as camps up here. People watch it. They think it's fine to come and do it. But then the side of it where sorry for my phone going off. But then the side of it where the people are leaving rubbish like I'm getting on about I, I can't get my head around that so like I say what, what do we do about it and I hope that sort of broaching this subject that people will listen and maybe people other people other YouTubers will talk about it in their videos and let's get let's get a message out there that it's not all right to be leaving rubbish on hills or anywhere you know and I'm not, I'm not just aiming at campers I'm aiming like I've already said a lot of walkers day walkers as well you, you come up you sit at these beauty spots you have your lunch and you're chucking orange peel about and banana skins and I, I once walked past a pile of rocks and there were a pile of pistachio nutshells in a pile and I, it, I just I can't understand that mentality. You fetch it up, it's heavier. <laughs> it's heavier when you're carting it up than it is taking it back down. You tie all your rubbish up in a bag and then chuck it under a rock when it's easier just to tie it to your rucksack and carry it back down. So if you know anybody that's watching that you know the YouTubers and stuff like this, let's sort of broach subject. Let, like I say, let's get this message out that it's not all right to leave rubbish and then these people that are watching that don't probably don't do youtube and this out a bit like i said they go out and camp because they watch youtube likes of me let's get a sort of a mentality see if we can sort of change the mentality of coming out camping and leave no trace let's respect and love what we do like I've already mentioned I've been doing this since I was a kid like it's my passion I come out here forget about all gear forget what about what I wear and you know tents sleeping bags backpack and all this I could come out with a setup that cost me hundred quid and I'd enjoy it just as much you know that's that's not the it's not the be all, be all and end all for me, the gear. I'm in a fortunate situation where I can afford to buy more top end gear, but that's that's not the point. The point is, I come out here for this, to enjoy it. And it's my escapism, it's my freedom. It's my headspace, it's me, me thinking time. And I know a lot of people do it, you know, for the, you know, the mental awareness and all that. So let's 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 hammer this sort of message home. Let's stop trashing as hillsides. Let's change this mentality. It's okay to leave rubbish and shit and everything all over hillsides. 
let's get this leave no trace message over and let's see if we can make a difference so yeah I've gone on far too long I've said I think I've managed to get across what I wanted to get across I feel a bit better for it because it's it's sort of been bothering me for quite a long time as this and I know we're sort of coming out at somewhere where we're in the middle of autumn now so things should start quietening down a bit heading into winter on a bit of sort of hardy regular year-round campers will be camping throughout winter and stuff like that the ones that sort of only come up during summer months and do what they're doing hopefully they sort of going back to the going on the holidays abroad and stuff so yeah hopefully we can sort of make a bit of an impact and let's sort of change this mentality so that's about it for now I've said what I wanted to say I'm gonna get another one of these and I'm gonna watch that current one go down in a little bit and enjoy what I've come up here to do chill out relax you know and, and it's my, it's my freedom so that's it well, that's the sun just set just there there was a very tiny gap in clouds upper bank of cloud and a lower bank of cloud you could just see disc at sun just dropping down between it Also, it's going to light all that cloud up there and all, look at that. So it's on fire, that now. Beautiful. That would have been some sunset, that, if that uh, lower bank of cloud hadn't have been there. It would have been beautiful, that. There's a, a very slight breeze. Very gentle breeze. And I've had to get down jacket on. You can certainly feel that damping air now, that uh, that autumn chill, definitely. I don't think there's going to be any coming back from this, there's not, not going to be any uh, warm nights and I know it's been a little bit warm today but I think we're definitely in the throes of autumn now, definitely 100%. I'm going to get a few pictures of that while it's like that. Well, it is. 25 to 9 I've just been uh, there catching up on my phone a little bit I'm just uh, going to get another brew up going on I've just felt the kettle up, spark that up but, uh, I don't know if you can hear it but it's, it's raining now not long after sunset it started raining and when I got in here and then up started going crackers on phone for uh, Aurora so then I waited what rain dropped off a little bit got outside took a few quick pictures with me phone couldn't see it behind there's uh, far too much cloud cover I took a quick picture you could just make it out you could just make a little bit of a green haze out in the sky but it, it weren't no special but like I say it, it, from south there were a really dark looking sky coming over a cloud and as you can hear now it's raining so I think that's about it for me to have the forecast and it looks as though we've got this all night uh, quite heavy one two o'clock in the morning these are off towards tomorrow morning but we've still got a bit of light showers and drizzle and a bit of mist and fog in the morning so we'll see see what happens in the morning so I'm going to get to uh, Get me send this brew, bit of chocolate as per usual, and uh, I, I shall probably catch up with it morning. So I'll bid you a good night, and I shall see you come on the morning. Good morning. I have literally just woke up. It's a few minutes to wait. I've had a lovely sleep. That rain did come during it, it did rain quite heavy and all, it, uh, it did wet me up, I don't know what time it was. I heard it, a little bit of a breeze got up as well. Uh, but yeah, it rained heavy during it, but I soon got off back to sleep, because I like to hear it, uh, something about rain on, on a tent. 
rather soothing and uh, sends me back off to sleep. So yeah, we'll get the uh, kettle on, get a brew, and some uh, breakfast. See what I can do on the top side, you. My clag. Clag, the kinder clag. Can't see you know. Oh, right, breakfast time. Oh, I'm just on my porridge. Just put a bit more water in there and just boiling it up just to get the residue off. So I can clean it out. I heard my phone go off a few times, you wouldn't need. I'm just looking at uh, Aurora, what? Uh, uh, can't speak. Just looking at the uh, Aurora app. And I saw it like I told you last night. I saw it, 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 it alarmed at seven o'clock and again at ten o'clock in red. Nine o'clock amber, ten o'clock red, eleven o'clock amber, and then it went in red all night. Look at that. All through early hours. You see bar at top there. <coughs> But, as I've just been saying, it's peed it down most at night. So, I so, shall uh, have a check on some of the Facebook groups later on. See whether anybody anywhere around the country got any decent photos or like that. I don't think anybody will have. I think it was had a quick look last night and they were saying like as it were just kicking off. Everybody's saying, oh, I can't see you now, it's all clouded over, but I'm sure somebody will have some somewhere. Right, I'm just going to empty this out and clean this bowl out, get my brew, and then we'll start packing up. Right, so this is it out here this morning, as you can see. The kinder clag. I've got everything packed up, all my bags packed now, I just need to get that out. Drop tent, get that packed up, and we'll get off. I've had a, a nice, relaxing morning there. Good laying. I'm just I was checking my watch just after the last spot till eight hours thirty five minutes sleep. I've had. So yeah, good, good keep. Nice, relaxed morning. Bit of breakfast to brew. There's no, uh, not much more to hang about up here for this morning. So yeah, we'll get this tent dropped. Get bag on back. Off ski. Ah then, all packed up, bag on back. That's where I want, you know, the score will leave no trace. Other than in the, this instance, a dry patch. But that's the only evidence that I've been here, and that'll probably wet out within a few minutes. It does look as though it's clearing slightly. So I'll get enough up to the path. I think I'm going to go back that way we came up. Uh, other option is to go along edge, but just want to get back down to the van. It's not very really cracking weather, is it? So, there's a uh, check weather forecast, there's some more range as well. So, we'll just go back along to Edale Rocks, back down Jacob's Ladder, back down to Valley. So, that is it. We shall get gone. Oh, we have views. straight down valley there and uh, we've just not long since dropped below cloud base looks as though cloud base is maybe at about maybe 600 meters or summit maybe just below maybe 550 600 meters yeah a good old kinder clag so yeah we're on top of uh, top end of old pack horse trail on the old cobble path. This is what I was talking about yesterday coming up here. I love, I love walking up and down this. Two and a half, three hundred years ago, like I was saying yesterday, what what people, what did they look like them people that used to come up and down here? With uh, us and uh, cart and that. Trading the ware and the goods. Proper folk them, aren't they? Proper folk. 
Right, we're back down at bottom of Jacob's Ladder. And of course, I'll be but it's busy going up here this morning or coming down. So, not see him now, but if we're going up Jacob's Ladder, there must have been 15, 20 folk of the sort of older generation, or I'll, I'll call it that. There must have been some sort of rambling club or summit. All, uh, all togged up. Had enough up Jacob's Ladder. Oh, I've gone to Kinder. Off up into the uh, clouds because it's still flaggy up there. Yeah, we'll uh, get on down here now. Get down through the valley. Back to Weedale. This is Highfield campsite, this. is a uh, Upper Bull Farm just over here. Oh, back here we we'll actually go through uh, Upper Bull Farm. I don't know if you can see caravans in here. It's a really nice site this actually. All got their own sort of plots. All fenced off. Lovely place. And then over this side, we've got these, uh, what do you call them, wigwams, whatever they're called. Bell tents, that's it, bell tents, aren't they? There's a couple of them. Like some little cabins with toilets and sinks are and stuff. And then over at the far side, there's like a little wooden sort of hobbit hut, whatever you want to call them. And that's got a chimney poking up out of that, so I bet there's a wood, wood stove or something in there. But yeah, it's a, a lovely place, this. Right, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here now. We're only about 10 minutes away from uh, Barber Booth campsite. Just down into Weedale then. It's spitting and all. It looks as though it's going to come down heavy shortly. Just making my way across this muddy field. So I just uh, a little quick recap on last night, what I was saying. I didn't realise I'd blabbed on for nearly 15 minutes when I turned the camera off and it shows you how long you've been talking. So yeah, it's... Uh, if you've managed to watch it all, stick through it. <laughs> well done. If not, fair dues. But yeah, it's a, it's a subject that we sort of, not just wild campers, hikers, day hikers, we need to get this message across. Leave no trace. It's not it's not all right to be trashing as hillsides and as countryside. We need to sort of, it's not even nip it in bud, is it? It's a, it's a major issue. So yeah, anyway, that's enough about that. So yeah, that's a, another camp I've enjoyed. Nice relaxing one. As always, I've had a good keep on that one. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching as always. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you on next time.